Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions from Plant Talk Radio. If you have a gardening question you'd like our host Fred Howard to answer, send him an email. The email address is fred at planttalkradio.com. Now for today's question. Susan called in, and she was on her way to work and didn't have time to stay on the line, but said, please ask Fred what I can put down to keep cats out of my beds. Okay. It's going to be difficult under any conditions, but the one thing I would start with is as one of our uh, well, backers here is Bonide. They have a product called uh, Dog and Cat Repellent. Now, it, it I've not delved into the label, but it is probably an odor uh, recommendation. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the, keep... act, the actual uh, name of it is Go Away. Okay. It, and they, they say they call it Go Away. A rabbit, dog, and cat repellent. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Uh, now, those th- that kind of thing is on the market, and uh, I I have not used it, uh, period. But I would imagine that it's very good as per Bonide products. Then to come from just basic experience, a couple of people have had luck with, one, cats don't like citrus smell. And I know of a, well, a particular lady and then others by recommendation have, when they peel an orange, they'll, they'll throw the orange peels around in the garden, uh, here, there to keep cats away and it has worked. And then another, if there is a specific area where the cats go, uh, or more or less a specific area, chicken wire under the mulch. Now, uh, chicken wire is flexible. Cats don't like to walk on unstable things. So as it kind of rolls along, and you don't even want to try to straighten it, absolutely straighten it out, you just put a little bit of mulch on top of that, and they will generally stay away. So between flat-out chemistry uh, of today's making, citrus hulls that I know to have worked, and then uh, in a specific area where they habit and <laughs> create problems, uh, the chicken wire will work quite nicely. And then uh, one of my, well, several of my clients have had other attitudinal things, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it alone at that. Well, I, the thing is, too, Fred, that it might be a combination of all three at different times because yes. they sort of adapt. Yes, this this is a common thing, it, and it doesn't seem to matter what, what animal it is. They will get used to a, um, well, an odor, a, a, a bangle hanging for reflecting light, uh, you banging on a pan. Uh, it's all, um, let's just say after a certain number of tries, they find out it's only an indication of possible danger. They'll go right on by it. And, mm-hmm. and um, that's when I start giving critters much more uh credit for their abilities when oh. they can <laughs> when they can outwit a human by going up to something three or four times finding out it's only an implied danger and they just go right on by it don't even get me started with squirrels okay <laughs> Hey, thanks again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our other podcasts as well, the Plant of the Week podcast and the Plant Talk Radio podcast, all on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to sponsor a daily podcast, contact us at fred at planttalkradio.com. To find out more about Fred Hauer and Plant Talk Radio, visit our website, planttalkradio.com. Circle270media.com.